So in today's video, we're going to be testing the Hack RC ESE. This is a brand new ESE, which is really interesting. I'm going to take it apart right now so you can see, get a better look here. So this is not going to be your typical review. However, we will look at the noise testing results and see how well it performed. So with that being said, uh, the timestamps are down below so you can skip to whatever part of the video you'd like. And before getting started, a word from our sponsor. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now, if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. So in today's video, we're going to talk about quite a bit here. So first of all, the dowel prop folds are one of my favorites. I also got the six and a seven inch. I haven't tested those, but we'll be testing those very soon on the channel. And uh, I'm very excited to do that. Now let's talk about what are we looking at here? Well, I put the hack RC in here. I actually forgot to get all the nice footage and stuff for it before I did this. And I'm rocking the Kakute all in one here. This is the F745. And why would I do such a stupid thing with 1408 motors? Well, this is so I don't kill myself. And, and you're like, okay, well, what do you mean by that? Well, this is actually running the AI inside of it. And it's actually been flying really great. Obviously, we do have our hiccups every now and then. And you'll get to see something very, very soon about that and might be released as well. So we'll come back to that in a little bit later here. So again, this is an ultralight build or a featherlight build. And if I find the link to the frame, I'll have it down below. And uh, for motors, I'm using 1408 2400 KV HLRC motors. This is kind of like a three inch 6S setup, but I wanted to go this route here. So I just, you know, I wanted to make it as heavy as possible, yet not be super heavy. And um, just so I can test it in the shop because I have to drive 15 minutes to 20 minutes away in order for me to go fly. So this is just a quick prototyping up in the shop here. And uh, so back to the ESC here. So this is by far, I think, or theoretically, this is the best 20 by 20 ESC on the planet. And what do I mean by best? Well, because it's using full-fledged FETs, it has decent filtration for a 20 by 20 stack and can be used both 30 by 30 and 20 by 20. However, the noise testing result, which we'll get into in a bit here, wasn't the greatest without a low ESR capacitor. So it was just in the, it needs a capacitor category. So yeah, but it's totally fine in that perspective. Now with the AI here, what I've been doing is, it, it, basically I've already burned like five motors here because it's oscillating so bad at times. And um, it tends to burn out motors, but the ESC has been handling very well for all this abuse, which is a good sign. However, I don't have the biggest capacitor here. We have a 35 volt, I think like a 220 microfarad here. And it's always recommended not to put it here. You should always put it on the ESC itself. So let's go ahead and talk about the AI's performance. Well, the AI's performance is actually pretty incredible, but there's still some room to get ahead. For example, right now, the first release that we ever got flying was pretty interesting because it flew great. The motors came down smooth. There was no oscillations. But the when, when it was uh, introduced to external forces, for example, some heavy wind or just like a kick in the face, um, then it would flip out. It'll just go just it'll just go apeshit, really. And right now we've made it more aggressive. But the more aggressive I make it, the more oscillation is introduced. So, so far, I've burned around like three motors here. But I've been using the same ESE, which has been holding up very well. I'm very happy for that. And it should. And uh, again, we'll come back to the noise testing in a bit here. Now, we're, we're, we've made it so aggressive that if it gets pushed, it just like wants to eat your hand and come back to its position, uh, which is a good thing. But we don't know how good it is yet on different builds. And um, but I think about two to three weeks away from a final possible release for people to go and test out and, and give me their give me your give, and give me the feedback. So I think I'm going to have my Patreons be exclusive uh, in the first release of the firmware. And then later on, right now it's not really optimized. So currently I'm using something called Neuroflight, which is uh, by Will Will Kosh. He created the environment and he created the, uh, or he just modified Betaflight. It's basically Betaflight with the PID controller removed and it has the AI uh, instead of the PID controller. However, uh, that was a couple years ago, I think, I think two years ago or a year ago. Now with the latest toolkits from TensorFlow, which is kind of like the toolkit we use to do the AI training here, there's a lot of changes that have been done. So there's a way to optimize this to get it to, to even work basically on F3 flight controllers. 
and uh, be able to make the AI a bit. For example, they have neurons and you can kind of consider them as memory. So there's only so much you can do with those. But if you increase the neurons, obviously it becomes even better. And uh, right now we're basically limited uh, because then the size of the firmware will be larger than what is available in your microcontroller unit. So there is a current way. I'm currently working on it right now to optimize it. And I'm planning on switching from TensorFlow down to PyTorch. PyTorch seems to provide a really well optimized uh, system in order to run on these microcontroller units and it should make for a really interesting setup but even with that said the current one is doing pretty phenomenal and i have all of the recordings from the first flight to uh, everything we've been doing so i'll be sharing that whole sequence of events with you guys very soon on the channel and um right now i don't know what to do with the firmware but we'll, we'll see in the upcoming days once i get a pretty decent one and uh it's actually pretty decent but i just you know i just don't feel like it's it's good enough for me i want it to be like as proper as possible again i'm still fighting fighting that balance between aggressiveness and oscillation and um kind of like you know an overtuned pid controller in a way so there, there has to be that balance and uh I, right now it's currently training on my latest system or latest reward system in order to combat that issue and it seems to be doing pretty well so maybe in a couple days i might even update you guys or even tomorrow so we'll, we'll we'll get back to that topic later on but if you guys are curious about more let me know down in the comment section i can make dedicated videos on that progress all right guys so there's a couple things that i really do like about this ESE. for example right here they have uh the pads broken out for us which is was, was very useful especially in this type of build so i really like seeing that and again this is I, I truly believe this is meant for like some sort of a high load micro ish build. I mean, it's a five inch, but you're using 20 by 20 flight controller. This would be a nice recommended uh, ESC here. Now, if we take a closer look at the backside, as you can tell here, there's no filtration going on for it. But if we flip it over here, we see this is the only amount of filtration we need. And they could have utilized most of this area here for more filtration, but they didn't. I wish they did. They also do provide you with the connector, and they obviously do have a connector right here. And it's pretty basic, I, but I really do love the 20 by 20 and 30 by 30. But obviously, because of doing this, we do have less real estate in order to add more capacitors and everything of that nature. But I really like what they've done here. And it's a, it's a step in the right direction, in my opinion. And um, I'm going to be using this quite often right now until I actually burn it. And obviously, I'll keep updating you guys on the status of this. Now, they also do provide you with the rubber grommets for the 30 by 30, also the 20 by 20, which converts it to an M2. They also give us a connector, an XT60, and some uh, 12 gauge, I think, or this is probably 14 gauge wire. Oh, 16 gauge wire and some 16 gauge wire. So they, they did a pretty nice job here. And if we flip it over here, what we can see is we see we do have our motor outputs. Now, this is the correct way to install it, by the way, if you did not know, uh, especially if, if you don't know what you're doing. You want this side to be up where the solder pads are. And this is, as you can tell, motor one, motor two, motor three and motor four. Very important to install it like this, unless obviously you know what you're doing. If you do, then that's up to you. And um, yeah, and this is where obviously I soldered everything here and it does have a VCC output. It doesn't have a 10 volt regulator, but um, I think it's very interesting and it has its own specific things that it could be used for. Like, for example, let's just say you only had a 20 by 20 flight controller and your frame was 30 by 30. So you'd be able to install the ESC on the bottom and then just bring in the, some 20 by 20 standoffs in there. And then you could just mount your uh, what is it called? Your flight controller right to the ESC, which is really insane. And it also does have the rubber grommets for these to transfer them into m2 holes again which is really useful and um if you didn't want m2 holes you could keep these without the rubber grommets right here and then that'll just be three millimeter holes so it does have a lot of use cases and i really like seeing that however i do wish the performance was slightly better in terms of noise but it's you know it's not a deal breaker it's only one of its kind right now and um it performed i mean it performed decent uh, it didn't blow up on my test bench which which says quite a lot so I'll just show you guys quickly uh, the results here compared to uh, the other budget ones that I've recently done. And you guys can go ahead and take a look at them here. Um, but obviously, again, SuxX E, which I'll have linked down below, also the F50 Mamba. Those are the budget uh, D-Shot 600 ESCs. This is also a D-Shot 600 ESC rated up to uh, 6S. And, well, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'm going to leave it at that. Come join my Patreon. You might have exclusivity to test out this new firmware. And, well, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.